Hello, and welcome to the StoreTrends SSD Hybrid and Full Flash Storage Array demo. My name is James Ikowski, and I will be walking you through a StoreTrends 3500 demo for the next 10 minutes. In this demo, we will highlight the new features and benefits for StoreTrends. As you can see on the screen, we support a multitude of options with respect to SSDs, from 200 gigs all the way up to 2 terabyte SSD drives, in hybrid or full flash array options. The use for store trends is high performance applications, databases, VDI storage, and mixed workload environments. We are scalable from 4.6 terabytes all the way up to 256 terabytes, and our cost starts around 50 cents a gig for the store trends product line. Our interfaces include four 1 gigabit interfaces for an enclosure, all the way up to four 10 gigabit interfaces for an enclosure. We have free in house proof of concepts and training to go with it. Our purchases include free installations, our guarantee is 100% money back, and American Megatrends has been around for almost 30 years. Now what we're going to do is log into the Manage Trends interface. This is the UI for the Store Trends 3500i. And what you can see here is the storage inf information pane. Uh, this will include the full space statistics, so 256 terabytes is the thin provision allotment. And down here we have storage pools, so this is the actual space that's available. Uh, we nearly have 29 terabytes available physically. Uh, 1.5 terabytes is used uh, as exact, exact provision space. Uh, we have snapshot space right here, nothing's being used. And we have 27 terabytes of available space. Now down below you can see all of the different uh, size sand volumes, uh, different available space, use space, what their, st uh, their first snapshot schedule is, um, and so forth. Now we have a storage wizard, volume wizard, uh, replication wizards, all kinds of wizards to basically help ease the management of the, of the store trends appliance. Uh, first of all, we'll start at the top and select the hardware health. This shows the basis for right controller, left controller usage uh, of the hardware. So you can see here we have 2% CPU utilization, I'm not running I.O. anymore, um, and 28% memory utilization. Now the network receive transmit on a network interface level, and on a per disk basis you can actually see there's a little bit of I.O. running to each disk. Uh, if it was full on, it would go all the way up to the top and show yellow and red, uh, stuff like that. Uh, here you can see the blue tabs, these are all in the storage pool. The stars are SSDs, so you can see I have two in arrayed one here for uh, tiering, and I have two SSDs in caching, so basically they're handling reads and writes that may come in uh, that wouldn't hit our SSD tier. So we're countering the writes from here and mirroring it among these two drives, and then any reads we're going to save those into these drives as well to ensure that nothing gets missed later on. Uh, here you can select any option, hover over them and see the status, or we can click a rear view flip the unit over and see, hey, what NIC interface is what IP, uh, also what the fan speeds are, stuff like that. Now going around the horn, you can see event log. We have uh, full event log reporting for left and right controller. Uh, management console, so if there is any scripting, capabil um, scripting needs, we are capable of doing that from right here within the UI. Um, and then we have a full dashboard. This covers everything, again, from the health um, to any specific um, needs that you may have. Uh, debug dumps are commonly used for support, uh, basically to get a system tap and review the performance metrics, maybe see if there's any um, persistent failures within the uh, hard drives, stuff like that. Um, we have a multitude of themes, uh, users, we have restricted users, and then most importantly, we actually have email alerts that will go to our Store Trends Store Aid team here in Norcross, Georgia, Basically, they will monitor all critical events, and if they see predictive counts getting high for uh, specific hard drives, they'll go ahead and actually replace them. Um, or if there's critical alerts such as space warnings, stuff like that, we will reach out and ensure that everything's covered and you guys are receiving the same alerts. Going down, we uh, have a full disk smart analysis, so we are watching all of the hard drives, um, predictive um, failures, medium errors, stuff like that. Uh, as that loads right here. And you can see we can compare everything from temperature, medium errors, um, uh, based on arrays or specific drives, depending on what you would like to see. Uh, here you can see this right here, and we can select enclosures, we can select specific uh, drives, and it'll give you a full output of the smart. 
show the smart health status, show the current drive temperature, etc. cetera. Uh, left controller, right controller, you can see we have system performance, network performance. So again, just like in health, we're monitoring everything from CPU, memory, um, and the network side. Uh, we do have full remote access control of the unit, so if there is some abrupt power failure or something um, out, of the, out of the box that may happen, you can simply log into the unit and power it on um, if it is completely powered down for, what, for whatever reason. So now what we'll do is we'll start at the top layer and go down. So we'll just select this uh, test LUN that I have right here. Um, you can see its capacity is 200 gigs. Uh, say I just want to expand this volume, we'll do it up to 300 gigs hit apply and it'll just simply expand out the available space for this volume. Uh, this is exact provisioned. We also support thin provision so it will provision as you go. Um, essentially we do uh, have redirect on write um, snapshots and volumes so they don't take up any additional space when there are changes to be made. Uh, we'll scroll down a little bit. Target information so you can see the access point right here. Uh, we do support active active and so that's why this is important. Uh, we have our IQN name, so basically what to access, uh, how to access this from the initiator, um, and any other options that you may want for management. Um, here we can set the snapshot schedule. We can have multiple levels, so I'll just do a few levels right here. We'll say every five minutes for the last hour, um, and we'll do every six, uh, every thirty minutes for the last six hours, and just say we want to do it every hour for the last forty-eight hours. Just simply select update schedule. It'll apply these settings, and so now it'll start automatically taking snapshots for us. And these snapshots are just simply viewed right here once they do start um, coming through. Now we'll look at the performance profile. This is the most important feature um, for, um, for the StoreTrends 3500i release. Um, and here you can see it's set to accelerate all IOs, so now we're setting this volume to be cached. We have an option of either doing that or accelerating random IOs or no acceleration all. We'll just simply select this, update cache, if we feel like this is a less important volume than others. We'll scroll down. So now you can see that it's no acceleration and we have high activity performance volume. We also have medium activity and low activity. This corresponds to the tiers. So tier 1 would be our SSD tier. Tier 2 would be our 15K SAS RAID 5, RAID 6 tier. And tier 3 could be our nearline SAS 7.2K drives. And you can see this is where all the capacity is, so that's kind of the point of having the tier. Now, if on the fly I wanted to select one of these other options and say update profile, I could just simply do that just like I did for the SSD cache profile. This is what we call quality of service for the volume, and it's how we enable the customer to make sure that they do what they need and allocate the blocks that they need where they want them. And provision the performance that they need for a particular volume. Now what we'll do is select the storage pool. So this is the collection of arrays that we have um, that we put the volumes within. Here you can see the we have cache settings, force write back. Uh, we can configure this to gracefully um, change from write through to write back upon UPS turning into um, uh, from, from regular um, power mode to battery mode um, and so forth. Um, and then also you can see the capacity of the arrays, the different speeds and, and stuff like that. And if we want to just simply add a logical drive because we have an expansion shelf, we can manually do that right there. Uh, we'll scroll down. You can see the statistics for the storage pool, how much space is being used um, on a tier level, and which tier it is. Now we're going into the SSD cache statistics. So first of all, we look at both drives. We can see that there's two of them in our cache set. Um, cache array basically. Uh, they are active and you can see the actual endurance so we monitor how much life the SSDs have left. Once they get down to a 20% threshold we actually automatically change from write cache to a total read-only cache to protect all IOs that are coming in to the unit. Now read cache just as you would expect if anything goes down to hard drives it's basically a, an SSD miss so what we'll do is bring that up into the read cache so if it does ever get accessed again it's fully available. Now what hard drives do bad is writing. We'll actually cache any writes that may come into hard drives and put them in SSDs first then when it's convenient for us we'll then flush that down to disks. Here you can see SRM storage resource management configuration the data movement so this is promotion and demotion of tiering blocks what we'll actually do 
we can stop that. It's always, it's always set to go, but say you've moved a lot of data or something like that, we can then manually stop it and say, hey, we'll stop it for right now, maybe end of the workday, we'll start it back up. Or you can just simply select the periodicity to only move blocks, maybe after hours, or just off-peak times that you feel are necessary. Um, the tiering policies, you can see here, currently it's set for if two days pass by and a block hasn't been accessed, it will be up for demotion. Uh, if it's on tier two, then it hasn't been accessed for two weeks, then it'll be up for demotion down to tier three. And conversely, promotion, you, if it's accessed 32 times, it'll go from tier two up to tier one, or 64 times from tier three up to tier two um, access. So in doing that though, this, these blocks that are accessed 32 or 64 times, in the interim, while they are being accessed that heavily, they're being cached. So we don't worry about the performance degradation that a lot of other companies do with respect to tiering. Now what we have are our uh, storage resource management um, our, uh, graphs. Uh, here you can see the space utilization. Uh, we can scroll this around. So this is on a container view. This is the old name for storage pool. Um, and you can see corresponding events, volume deletion, creation, stuff like that. So now we know why maybe you're ahead of what schedule your schedule is for growth and stuff like that. And based on this growth, it'll actually project out how long it thinks that it'll last. Performance uh, of the volumes. So here we have this test volume right here. We can select writes, reads. We can slide the bar around like always. And we can zoom into a particular zone so we can see what the throughput usage is for uh, this right here is a 66% reads, 33% write, um, um, 8K block test. And so you can see actually what the throughput is for that. Uh, disk latency, we go around and monitor every disk, what the performance is going out and the response time is to uh, any I.O. that comes in. Uh, we can do that on an array level or on a specific disk level, just depending on what the customer wants. Workflow management. Uh, here you can see this is a demo system, so it's not the most... Um, normal workload. Um, you can see when I'm doing demos, when I'm running I.O. Um, and you can see I was just running I.O. right here. Now based on this usage though, we are still trying to predict what the I.O. will be and when the high points of the day will be for the unit. So we don't do things like demotion of uh, tiering blocks um, during those peak hours. We'll save that for the off hours automatically. Um, here is the actual usage of the blocks. Um, so you can see information lifecycle management, it's basically our auto tiering. And you can see class five, so it's been accessed in the last hour. And so now these blocks in particular though, they were misses off of the SSD tier, but they were cached. And so they were easily handled even though they are down on the near line, or these are the 15K SAS drives right down here. Now, when it does come time, these will start getting promoted up into the 15, or the SSD drives, and so then we won't have to worry about these blocks in the SSD cache anymore. They will then um, clear out. Uh, storage pool space, so we can actually see the space used within different tiers. And we can see IO performance active. If I had IO running right now, you can see it on a throughput or an IOPS basis, and you can see the block size. And then here's an older graph. Um, basically giving the old latency, so you can see here all the different types of I.O. that you've had and what latency um, has come on. And as always, we've always supported DR. We support DR to similar type units or from our dual controllers down to our single controller units just to ensure that the customer can save costs, save money up front, and have their data protected on a separate site. Now. Thank you for taking the past 10 minutes to watch this video. Uh, to schedule an in-depth demo, request pricing, or to schedule an on-site proof of concept unit, please contact the sales team at 1-800-828-9264 or at storetrends.com.